I'm not usually much of a Firefox user. I typically run Brave, but people keep telling me how amazing tree style tabs are. So I decided to try them out. And you know what? They're actually pretty good. I can see the point. Now the concept is very simple. So typically tabs operate along a single dimension. Let's say that we have Reddit open, for example, and we want to go to whatever the first subreddit we see is. Let's say r slash Australia. And let's say we want to go to another subreddit, whatever ends up being, let's say whatever this is, ASX bets. Yes, ASX bets. Now, when we have these tabs open, there's not really any indication that these are grouped together. So if we go and open up some other tabs, like say YouTube and Wikipedia and Facebook and a bunch of other tabs, at some point we're going to have so many tabs that it's going to be hard to manage all of them. But what if you could go and group your tabs together? And that's basically what tree style tabs does. So we can go and take this Reddit tab and then make it a child of this other tab. And if we want to, we can actually go and collapse all of those tabs and shorten what's actually visible. But if we keep stuff managed correctly, we can actually know instantly where all of our Reddit tabs are going to be. So if you're the sort of person who has a bunch of YouTube videos open, a bunch of news sites open, a bunch of chat apps open, and whatever other stuff you might have open, rather than having this massive long line of tabs where if you open up stuff in different orders, it's going to become hard to work out where along your tab line stuff is actually located you could instead have these very clear groups and work out exactly what you want to find. Now, it won't manage the tabs for you, but it does give you the opportunity to actually have some sort of grouping. So there are going to be four types of tabs we can actually make, and we can decide what tab to make with this drop down off to the right hand side here. So we have an independent tab, a child tab, a sibling tab, and a next sibling tab. So an independent tab is basically going to act as a regular sort of tab. A child tab will make that tab the child of whatever tab you're currently selected on. So in this case, I'm on r slash Reddit. If we click on that one, now that's going to be a child of that group. And we can actually go and make this tree as deep as we want. So we can make another child to that one and a child to that one, so on and so forth. A child tab will make that tab a part of the group you're currently selected on. So right now we're on r slash Australia. If we make a child tab, it's now a part of that group. If we go and make another child tab, because we're selected on the new tab now, now the child will be a child of the one we just made. And we can keep doing this. I don't know if there is a limit to when it will stop. There is a limit to when it will be useful though. So you sort of have to work that one out for yourself. And all of these subtrees are going to be independently collapsible. So if we collapse this one here, these two here will no longer be visible. Next up, we have a sibling tab, which puts the tab at the same level as the one we're selected on. So right now we're on r slash ASX bets. So if we make that one, it now puts it within the r slash Australia group. And next sibling is basically the same thing. The sibling tab puts the new sibling at the end, whereas the next sibling puts the sibling as the next tab inside of the tree. And you can modify how different tab creation options actually have their tabs be made. So for example, if I just go and click on the new tab button, it automatically makes a sibling tab. But if I do a middle mouse click, it's going to make a child tab. If I say make a new tab from a link here, it's going to go and open it up as a child as well. Or another one is let's say I go and open up a tab from outside of Firefox. That is going to open up the tab as a independent tab, as we can see right here. And by default, closing tabs is handled quite sensibly. So if I can close this tab right at the top here, it's not actually going to close every single tab that's part of the subtree. There is a way we can go and do that, but by default, what's going to happen is it's going to move the next tab into the spot at the top of the tree. But when there's nothing left to fill that spot, it's going to recursively move the tree up to make sure everything's still in line. If you would like to change any of the tree style tabs behavior, everything can be configured from the extension icon over here and the new tabs behavior is under the new tabs behavior section. Basically, everything you could want to configure is pretty configurable in here. As for the tree closing behavior, that's going to be under tree behavior, under when a parent tab is closed or moved. And there are some recommended settings in here, but you do have custom control as well. Now, one thing I don't particularly like is you can't actually configure the middle click behavior on a tab. So by default in Firefox, if you middle click on a tab, it closes the tab. But I would prefer tree style tabs to have the option where if I middle click on a tab, it closes the entire group. 
I don't need it to be the default, I would just like there to be an option. I mention that because you can go and modify the double click behavior, which right now I've got configured to actually go and close a tab. Now, pin tabs are not something I ever bother using. So if we go and right click on a tab, click pin tab, it adds it up to the top here and there's a bit of a problem with tree style tabs. So once something is pinned like this, we can't actually go and add anything into its group. There is no way to go and do this, which would be fine, except if we go and pin a group, it goes and adds the pin to the top and then creates a new box down here where we can actually go and keep adding stuff into it. So the behavior isn't actually consistent. If it's already a group and you pin it, it still works as a group, but you can't make groups on pins. It's not really a big deal. As I said, I don't use pins, but if you do, having that weird inconsistency might be a bit of a problem. Also, unpinning stuff sort of breaks the group a little bit. All of these tabs here are supposed to be in the same group, and when I unpinned it, they all got dropped out of that group as if I had removed the tab. Now, right-clicking on a tab will reveal all of the regular Firefox behavior you can do, so you can, like, reload tabs and all that, but there's also a tree of tabs section as well, and this lets you do things like, say, collapse a tree recursively. So let's go and say collapse this tree recursively. And this means not just the top level is collapsed, but every single level inside of the tree as well will also be collapsed independently. The other options you have there are all fairly self-explanatory, doing things like, say, expanding all of it, which would be the opposite of collapsing, or bookmarking the tree, which actually is kind of cool to do. I don't use bookmarks inside my browser though, so it's not a big deal for me. Or you can reload the tree or close the tree, all fairly self-explanatory things. Now having to go into two layers of context menus is probably going to be a bit annoying to do. So one thing you can go and do instead is go up to the extension icon and go to context menu and actually decide what options you want in the top level menu. So let's say I want the close this tree and I want the collapse this tree and I want the expand all. So if we go and right click on a tab now, as we can see, all of those options have now been added into the top level of the context menu. One thing you may be curious about is if you go and drag and drop a tab, how does Firefox actually handle that? Well, let's go and find out. Let's take this tree right here and drop it off. And as we can see, it's perfectly maintained the tree. We can even go and take this tree and drag it back and that closes the window and the tree remains. This behavior can be configured as well with the drag and drop option menu in here. I don't think there's any reason to really touch it though because the default behavior is exactly what you would want. You can make it so it just completely ignores groups and just takes the singular tab that you've selected, but that completely defeats the purpose of using the tree style tabs. Now, being a browser plugin, one thing I found really, really surprising is there's actually plugins for the plugin. So if we go down on the GitHub page, they're not really plugins for the plugin, they're extra extensions you can add to your browser, but they basically rely on tree style tabs actually being there. So you can do things like TST active tab in collapse tab, TST lock tree, TST tab drag handle, and there's a bunch of other ones in here as well. I haven't tested any of these out, if you want to have some extra behavior though that isn't there in the default version, this might be worth checking out. Now, this entire time, my tree style tabs have been on the left hand side. And this is because this plugin basically only operates as a side tab bar. You can put it on the right hand side if you prefer, but it has to be on the side. But when you install the extension, it doesn't go and disable the native tab bar, so you will actually have them both enabled at the same time. What you should go and do is go into your user chrome.css and then go and disable that. So in my case, if we go down to the Mozilla folder, go into the Firefox folder, into this folder, into the Chrome folder. Inside of the user chrome.css, I'm basically just running this very, very simple line that disables my tabs toolbar. Getting your user chrome.css working in a modern version of Firefox does require a bit of work, so I might do a follow-up video where I just focus on that file. You may also want to add a custom theme to it with your user Chrome as well, but that's sort of outside of the scope of this video. Now, I fully understand why some people love this plugin and keep telling me they have no interest in leaving Firefox until they can find something equivalent on the Chromium side. In my case, though, I don't really have a use for it because I'm one of those people that doesn't keep a bunch of tabs open. Maybe I'll have at most eight. That's on a really bad day, I'll have eight tabs open. 
if I want to have more tabs open, typically what I'll do is I'll have multiple windows open. Yes, that is way more of a RAM hog, but my system has 32 gigs. And unless I'm doing something that is very RAM intensive, which isn't super often, having that extra RAM be used up isn't too big of a deal for me. Speaking of RAM, if you'd like to ramble on the internet, how about you set up a blog over on Linode? If it runs on Linux, you can run it on Linode. They have the distros you'd expect available like Ubuntu and Debian, but also Arch and Gentoo because why not? They've got multiple server plans available, so whether you want to host a blog or even a personal VPN, there'll be one that fits you. I'll be using Linode to host all of my community game nights. If you need help, Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone, regardless of your plan size. Right now you guys can get started on Linode with $100 credit by going to the link on screen or in the description down below. Linode was in the game three years before Amazon entered cloud computing, so you know they know their stuff. A huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring the channel. So I think that's going to be everything for me. Before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Will, Brennan, Chico, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Pitty, Stephen, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, there'll be links down below to my Patreon, subscribe star, leave a pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey and BitChute if you'd like to watch my content on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.